So I will stop here. I will welcome uh, the Vice President of the Court, Judge Angashayo, and uh, I will give him the floor, of course, to thank you because he came from the other conference that he organized to be with us. Thank you very much, um, uh, Julia. Um, first of all, congratulations to Ineta and yourself to this uh, groundbreaking uh, book, groundbreaking uh, in the methodology, and uh, this is something very unique and interesting in, in that respect. I was uh, tasked to speak uh, to you briefly on the role of the court in changed environment in Europe I guess this is uh, a, a intended to be a preface to a book which may or may not be preferred by the two editors. In other words, the question is, from the perspective of uh, academic judicial cooperation, whether there will be a second volume given the changing or changed environment in Europe. So, what uh, I I'm uh, going to do is to, to draw a few uh, lines uh, in the sand uh, and whether there will be a silicium valley out of that, that's up to you. <laughs> um, the problem at the moment seems to be one of perception, whether we are really in a deep crisis in Europe and whether this will have an effect on the court, which if there is a deep crisis, is, is a, not even a second-rate issue. Because obviously, an international court will not be able to, to resist to the challenge of a deep crisis. Um, but it's also a, a matter of past perception, whether the court and the uh, forces behind the court, the human rights movement, <coughs> which is also present at the state level, was perceiving this coming. And I think that's where the real problem lies. This problem that emerges today was in the making. It's not something that occurred two weeks ago. It's not something that occurred at Brexit. It's not something that occurred uh, then. Uh, Territorial disputes emerged. I think that's a proper word to use when uh, your uh, remarks are recorded. It, it started earlier, and we did not want to notice, and by we I mean Europe. And when I talk about Europe, I think that uh, this book also demonstrates that uh, we can speak about Europe not only as a kind of legal homogenization, unfinished, but as something that is a, a more than a, a cultural community. The book shows that this is not, that Central and Eastern Europe is not something about. As we see the problems today, the problems are not originating from East and Central Europe because exactly the same problems are not visible in Western Europe. The difference is that uh, it was thought that this cannot happen in Western Europe, and it was thought that it is normal that it occurs in, in some parts of, of uh, Eastern, East Central Europe, but it can be uh, managed. So I think the problem of perception is one of past perception. Now I think the problem is seen, the question is whether it's too late or not. And here I would like to make a little legal remark. The problem today is not anymore of uh, human rights. It's a problem of what happens to democracy, how democracy is reacting to social and geostrategic challenges. Uh, very often this is this uh, democracy problem is described as uh, populism, which is a catch-all word, but it, it gives you a, a sense. Now, what, what happened to our court? We were acting as lawyers should. We were case-oriented. We were always, although we have case law, which indicates that we have to go beyond that, or very old case law, 
we were following the mantra of being enforced to be case oriented. We decide the case in the specific circumstances where there was disagreement or we were afraid of certain consequences. We developed a number of deferential uh, techniques which are all legitimate. Uh, whether they are applied properly or not, that is not the moment to discuss. And we had a wonderful tree. And the more we had this wonderful tree, may I refer to one of the favorites of, of a colleague of ours present here who uses this metaphor very often, this force in my section. We don't see anymore the forest. So what happened here, we did not uh, realize that when there is an Article 8 issue, or there is an Article 10 issue, or there is a uh, Article 3 issue, there is also a problem of democracy. We will not touch on it. We have this very vague language of, of uh, we have an issue that democracy is great. Sure, it's great, but it's a little bit more than that. If we leave at that stage, then it is, it opens up the door of what I call a gross model of things. So we ended up with disregarding the general picture. And we imposed on ourselves, for very, very good reasons for normal times, margin of appreciation, mm -hmm. which does not allow to see the broader consequences. Now, this is an open question, whether the court is really here to look into this broader aspect. One thing for sure, that if the changed environment is moving in the direction that uh, some of us feel and very few of us are or dare to name, and it would be very inappropriate for a judge to name it by name, but we all know what we're talking about. If this is really going on, then each, it is very much possible that when you decide very narrowly a freedom of expression is, we determine in reality what democracy should be. And that is really the state, at stake. Again, I don't want to take a position on what is appropriate for a court in that, but this is moving to a very different place. It's not anymore the comfort that we assume that Europe is democratic, and you know, there are disagreements, but at the end of the day, it will prevail, nobody is really challenging. That is not the case anymore. And for in that perspective, <coughs> I'm afraid that uh, even in the circumstances of the case, we do allow, or we may try to slow down a process that leads somewhere where uh, democracy will not be anymore what we all hope for. And I think that is a, a, a real uh, possibility. And uh, it may sound very pessimistic. Someone told me yesterday, that, oh, you must be a very happy person. You must be an optimist. I said, I'm a very happy person, but I'm a, a card-carrying pessimist. So, to be pessimist in this context is not to say that it should just hands up and try to disappear as I will just do in a moment with your kind permission to have to go back to the other. Uh, it is something for a food for so we really have to reflect, to realize that this is a possibility, and then see how far one can go as a court. But to assume that this is business as usual, I think that is not a responsible attitude. I'm not uh, saying that this is what happens, not at all. I think this uh, topic that we have given to me indicates that there is concern about that. And I just uh, wish that there will be a continuation of, of the book, notwithstanding the change. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>